presentation on Minor White for Photography 1 Honors. Um, some general facts about Minor White. Uh, he was born on July 9th, 1908, and died on June 24th, 1976. He was well known for his photographs about landscape and scenery. Most of his photography was also in black and white. He taught many classes, workshops, and retreats on photography at the California Inst School of Fine Art, Rochester Institute of Technology, and Massachusetts Institute, Institute of Technology. Uh, he was a gay man, but his fear of loss of teaching his jobs and some of his most compelling images are f studies of men who he taught or who had a relationship with, and that caused him not to tell anyone. He was also uh, one of the creators of Aperture Magazine, and he was named one of the greatest American photographers of all time. Um, most of his photography was black and white. Um, most of it was also scenery or some type of landscape. White was greatly influenced by uh, Stiglitz's concept of equivalence, which White interpreted as allowing photogra photographs to represent more than just their subject matter. White found a passion in the black and white scheme of photos because it captured the contrast between objects and background. Um, they appealed to me because it's eye-catching to see like the dark and the light between the different objects in the photos. Um, I enjoy most of the photos taken by Minor White because he focused less on people and characters and more on actual like scenes and like actual real world objects. Um, the environment that that he typically took was really open, open land and like fields and stuff. So I really like that too. Um, a lot of the photographs have very sharp contrast with the black and white, so I just think that's very eye appealing to me. Um, why are the interesting feeling and my feelings toward the photos? Uh, his photos are interesting to me because even though they approach, like each photo is approached very similarly, he executed them all differently. So some, he takes different, different angles or different types of photos or focuses on depth or contrast or the different sharp edges between them. Um, each, if he, even though each of his photos are very similar, they all have different meanings depending on how you look at the photo and how you see it in your own eyes. One photo may be more soothing, another aggressive. One may you feel sad, another one happy. These photos can make you feel a variety of different feelings, yet they all have the same theme in each photo, which is black and white earth scenery. So in uh, this photo of the barn, um, the dark foreground with the barn, so like the thing in front of the barn and the shade under the barn roof, I like how, how dark it is compared to the rest of the image. Um, the tree line on the very top in the image on the skyline is diagonal compared to the up and down of the barn and the vertical and the horizontal lines of the barn or like the tree. Um, to the right of the barn there's a big shadow. I like how that's all black. There's no like detail within it compared to the rest of the photo which is all detail. Um, in this second photo it's a big road with trees surrounding it and the sky and the mountains in the back. I like how Minor White uses um, the shadows in, on the right side of the trees on the road to like have it offset the up and down motion of the trees. Um, just the shadows in general I think are very well photo photographed and the dark mountains compared to the white tree uh, leaves. I like that a lot because the grass is also white and the trees are white compared to the road which is very dark and the mountains which are very dark. Um, this is the third photograph. Uh, the black barn offsets the white in basically the whole image. It's one solid black object like the sky but most of the rest of the image is white or a shade of gray. Um, in the sky the, it's like all white clouds with a very dark background really shows the contrast between the two different objects and the ridges so like the mountain range I like how those are dark compared to the white clouds above it because it really shows the difference between what's land and what's in the sky uh, this is the fourth image I like the pure white sky in the mountains because it shows the difference between the background and the foreground um, the shadows in the mountains are also very well captured because it shows the different size of the mountains and all the little details in the mountains are like crevices within the mountain. 
um, the location of the sun. So like, it'd be facing toward, not away from, but toward the mountains because the shadows on the right side and the light side are on the left. Uh, this is the fifth image. Uh, I like this one because it has kind of a mystery feel to it and like it makes you curious what's like below the clouds because they're all kind of foggy. Um, and then right poking on the left side of the screen is poking at the Golden Gate Bridge, which is like how it's kind of a solid black object kind of escaping the white objects. Um, the the ridge line on the left or the mountains or whatever you want to call them, I like how that's dark covered in the white fog almost to like contrast the difference between the white and the dark of the photo. Uh, this is the last image. Um, I really like how you can see every little vein of the hand and every little crevice of the hand in the photo. Um, there's most of the left side of the picture is black, most of the right side is white. Um, you can, and on every little line of the tree, which typically tells how old the tree is, you can kind of see um, the differences between the white and the dark. So like the dark lines are very obvious and the white spots are kind of more subtle. And at the bottom of the tree, the white spots are also a lot more subtle. And yeah, that's my presentation. Thanks for watching.